الجهاد الحي مبارلين طريق نابلس عذرا الرجاء وضعك نعمة لا مكان Hey guys, welcome back to Naily by Nature. My name is Naily. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so I am in Nablus, Palestine. This is my first week in Palestine officially. Um, I arrived last Saturday, I believe. And um, I arrived through Tel Aviv and then spent a night in Jerusalem. And then the following day, I traveled to Nablus, Palestine. And my time here has just been so wonderful. So honestly, so unexpectedly wonderful. I am just overjoyed and just like shocked by the friendliness of the people here and just like the, the progressiveness. I think maybe I thought before I came to Palestine that it was going to be like this war-torn country, but there is a lot of struggle happening in Palestine, which I will get into in this video. But you know, overall, this first week here has just been amazing. So I flew out of JFK uh, on a Delta flight from New York City to Tel Aviv. And uh, there was like a little bit of like extra security caution to get on the plane which is perfectly fine but when i landed and i had to go through um immigration because me and my niece have both arabic names uh we were both uh, questioned so we were kind of told to sit outside and and we waited for maybe like three hours until someone came to like um, speak to us and they asked us a few questions and then we were on our way. So I guess that's just their pr protocol, whatever. So that was fine. We waited just about three hours. It was kind of intense. To be honest, I was pretty calm throughout the whole situation. I was just towards the end, just getting a little antsy, ready to leave, take a shower. It was like a 15 hour flight. So I was just ready to like lay down and go to sleep. So I spent a night in Jerusalem. Um, to be honest, I didn't spend much time there because I arrived there at night and then I left the following morning. And right now it is Ramadan, so uh, Muslim shops are closed and um, it, was, it was quite quiet. So I didn't see much of what was happening on the news with Al-Aqsa Mosque and, and kind of the, the fighting that has been going on. So I didn't see any of that. In the morning, I took a bus to from Jerusalem to Ramallah and then Ramallah to Nablus and then got here. Um, so I took public transportation to travel to Nablus, which was pretty insane because I probably would never do that. But because of the way um, the country is kind of split up and, and there's these checkpoints and even though Nablus is closer to the airport, you still have to go all around because of the occupation and the settlements and things like that. So it did make things a little difficult, but 
uh, honestly, public transportation worked perfectly fine, um, and it was actually really enjoyable. So I am staying in a hostel in Nablus, and it is so, so beautiful. I am staying in the old city, so a lot of the buildings here were made from like the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, like a lot of these stones that you see here. It's just, it's really amazing um, just seeing the architecture and seeing how so much of this architecture is still intact. Is It's really beautiful to see and uh, to experience. I am here during Ramadan, so you can't really eat during the day and I am fasting. I can imagine that if you are not fasting or you know, you're not Muslim and, and you're not you know, participating in Ramadan, it can be difficult to visit a place like Palestine during Ramadan. Um, but after iftar, there is so much food everywhere. There's places outside that sell like falafel and there's like fruit stands. There's just like an abundance of food everywhere. And it's so, so delicious. And people are always inviting you to come to their house to eat, which is honestly just the nicest thing. Cause it's like, I guess I didn't really expect this level of kindness from people because there is so much, um, there's a lot happening here in Palestine. And when you have discussions with people here, uh, it's all they really talk about is the occupation. And which is completely understandable because they're in survival mode. Like this is their life. So the occupation affects them on um, like a, a much more personal level. So when people are like just so inviting and opening their homes to you, it's just, it's unbelievable because it's like, you know, you come from New York City where people have so much of society of so much of everything and they would never just invite you to their home if they met you on the street it'd just be so weird for them but here in palestine like people are have the least but still give you the most and i i feel so humbled and so honored now although i'm having a really wonderful time just being here in palestine um and like eating really good food and and connecting with people there is a part of the trip that is morbid, which is obviously the occupation and Jeff and definitely how it affects everyone's lives here. And I think that's the part of it that like, it's really sad and, and it's difficult to kind of just put all my learnings into this one video, which I hope to kind of find a way to bring their stories to you guys. But just hearing about how difficult it is for them to progress in their everyday lives, just how expensive things are. It's definitely heartbreaking to hear from these Palestinians that like they can't really do much here. You know, they can't leave here. Um, they're very much contained into where they are. Um, it's difficult for them to, to leave outside of their communities because they need the proper like IDs and things like that. And, and there's just checkpoints everywhere. So, you know, people can't really travel as freely as they like. So many of them have lost friends and, and family members and they've all just become numb to the situation, but they're still so hopeful to be free. It's something that every human being is deserving of. Um, but they don't have it. At the same time, seeing them be so resilient and, and still be so hopeful and still be so kind and loving, it's inspiring for me to, to see their resilience in, in just like continuing their day despite like, you know, 20 minutes from here, there was like rockets, you know, being thrown at them from by the Israeli government. So it's like these things are happening. There's shootings everywhere. People are dying everywhere. Um, so much chaos happening right now in the country, but every day they get up and they continue to move forward. Just seeing the complexities of a country and seeing and realizing like everything that, you know, we're being told in the US media, it's not true. And I think I'm, I, I honestly feel so happy and blessed to be here because I feel like I'm looking at this situation and this conflict and this war with a completely different lens. And um, I do hope to spend time here and in Israel um, to really get to know people and to really tell their stories. So in the next few weeks, um, I'll be doing 
more interviews and kind of take you guys along with me when I go visit different parts of the country and um, kind of bringing different perspectives to you guys because I don't think that these are the voices that were being that are being heard especially in the US media and I think that these are voices that are deserving to be heard. I'm really happy to be here and I'm so happy to bring you guys along with me on this journey to really tell these stories as truthfully as possible um, as the people who want their stories to be told to tell it exactly how they want it to be told and, and to allow you as a viewer to discern for yourself like what is truth and, and maybe put yourself in, in the shoes of people who often are silenced. So I really hope that you guys join me on this journey and uh, support me and continue to subscribe and comment. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys at my next video. Bye.